Today we're going to look at a pretty interesting problem involving the prime factorization of an astronomically large prime number. And this comes from a Korean math contest. So let's see our goal. We'd like to prove that 7 to the power 2 to the 20 plus 7 to the power 2 to the 19 plus 1 has at least 21 distinct prime factors. Okay, so let's jump into it. And probably the most important thing here is making the following observation on how to write this object. So let's notice that we can write, well, I'm just gonna copy it over first. So I've got seven to the two to the 20 plus seven to the two to the 19 plus one. So I can in fact write that as seven to the two to the 18 all to the fourth power, and that's by exponent rules because we would multiply the exponents, but that would be multiplying two to the 18 and two to the two, giving us two to the 20, and then plus seven to the two to the 19 squared plus one. So in other words, it's of the form x to the fourth plus x squared plus one, where of course, we're taking x to be something. In this case, let's see, x is gonna be equal to seven to the two to the 18. Okay, great. But now looking at it like this, we can actually factor this. And this is a fairly standard quartic polynomial factorization. So it's one to keep in mind if you ever see this sort of polynomial. And in fact, this factors as x squared minus x plus one times x squared plus x plus one. Okay, great. But what does that really tell us about our problem? Well, let's take this number over here and apply the factorization. So notice I'm just gonna maybe rewrite this one more time, seven to the two to the 20 plus seven to the two to the 19 plus one. So applying this rule and then applying exponent rules to write a simplification, this will factor as seven to the two to the 19 minus seven to the two to the 18 plus one and then times seven to the two to the 19 plus seven to the two to the 18 plus one. So we have that sort of factorization. But notice what we've done here is we've taken this object, this number that we wanna study, and we factored something off of it, leaving us with, well, a number which is very, very similar, just one step lower. And you could perhaps take this same factorization trick that we just used and factor this one as well. And that'll factor as seven to the two to the 18 minus seven to the two to the 17 plus one times the corresponding thing with addition. So seven to the two to the 18 plus seven to the two to the 17 plus one, and then so on and so forth. And you could keep factoring that, well, until you land at the ground, if you will. But what we really need before we do that is to hopefully have all of these factors be relatively prime to each other. So in other words, they will not share any prime factors, but if they don't share any prime factors, that'll help us count up the distinct number of prime factors. And so we'll do that generally with a claim that we'll prove on the next board. So let's start here with a general version of that calculation that we made on the last board, which says that seven to the two to the n plus seven to the two to the n minus one plus one factors with these lower powers of seven. Okay, and now we're gonna make the following claim. And that claim is that these two factors that we've generated are relatively prime. So in other words, their GCD is equal to one. So let's get that written on the board. Okay, so there we have it. The GCD of those two numbers is equal to one. That's what we'll show. And we'll do this by taking a common divisor and showing that that common divisor has to be one. So let's suppose we have a common divisor. 
So in other words, D divides, I'm gonna call these things capital A and capital B. So D divides capital A and D divides capital B. And then just for once and all, we'll put capital A over here, seven to the two to the N minus one, minus seven to the two to the N minus two plus one, and then B has the corresponding format. But now let's observe that if D divides A and D divides B, that tells us that D divides their difference, B minus A. But that means that D divides, well, let's calculate their difference. Well, if we take the difference of B and A, notice that the top powers of seven will cancel and, well, the number one will cancel also, giving us two times seven to the two to the N minus two. But what does that tell us about D? Well, it gives us the following possibilities. D could be equal to one, D could be equal to two, or D could be equal to seven to the K um, for some power of seven. So let's notice that D equals two is impossible. And that's because each of these numbers is odd because we have an odd number plus an odd number plus an odd number that nets us an odd number. So neither of these can be, di be divisible by two. So this is impossible. Likewise, none of them can be divisible by seven either, and thus they can't be divisible by any power of seven. And that's because, well, if they're divisible by seven, then one is also divisible by seven because seven divides the first two terms, so it has to divide the last term. So that means this here is also impossible. D is equal to seven to the K. But that leaves us only one possibility, and that's the possibility one of D equals one. So the only common divisor that's possible is one, which makes it the greatest common divisor. Okay, so now that we've got those two tools, and by those two tools, I mean our factorization tool and our GCD result, we're ready to finish it off. Okay, now we're ready to finish it off. Let's start with our number in question. And now let's start with the factorization tool. So that gives us seven to the two to the 19 minus seven to the two to the 18 plus one times seven to the two to the 19 plus seven to the two to the 18 plus one. But now our, by our result that we just proved involving the GCD, these two numbers right here are relatively prime. So that means they do not share prime factors. But now let's keep going and we'll write out one step explicitly and then we'll generalize. So let's see here, I'll just copy this first term down and then I'll apply the factorization rule to the second term. Okay, there we have it. But now since this first term, seven to the two to the 19 minus seven to the two to the 18 plus one and its companion are relatively prime, then that means that it has to be relatively prime to both of these. Furthermore, this middle object is relatively prime to the last object. So that means at the moment, we have three numbers that are all mutually relatively prime. But that means that we have at least three prime factors, a prime factor within this first one, another distinct prime factor within the second one, and similarly, another distinct prime factor within this third one. And now we can keep going and we'll end up with the following final factorization. Okay, so there we have it. We just extended that factorization all the way down. Notice it starts up here at seven to the two to the 19 minus seven to the two to the 18 plus one. And it ends, the last term with subtraction is seven squared minus seven plus one. And then we have one additional term, seven squared plus seven plus one. And then by repeated applications of our claim, we know that all of these are relatively prime. But let's see, how many total terms do we have here? Well, well, I missed a squared here, so I'll put that back in. And we can do it by counting the exponent on the power of two right here. So notice way down here, we're starting with a two to the one, and then here we have a two to the two, next will be a two cubed, all the way up to two to the 19. 
So these terms here account for 19 total terms. But those 19 terms will give us 19 distinct prime factors. But then you might say, well, where do the other two prime factors come from? Well, they come from this last term right here, which is 7 squared, 49, plus 7 plus 1, which is 57. But note that we can divide 57 as 3 times 19, giving us an additional two prime factors. And we know that they're distinct from the above prime factors, again, because of our claim right here. So since 19 plus 2 is equal to 21, we have it. We've counted up, well, at least 21 distinct prime factors. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.